What's up you guys, and Tempest here. I'm gonna show you a quick way to make glitch sounds using max for lives mono sequencer in Ableton Live. Mono Sequencer is a really powerful tool that you can use in a variety of ways in your music production. There is a video that I made called How to Make Melodies Faster using the Mono Sequencer. There are some points that I don't cover in this video that I covered in that one because just the two concepts are different. I highly encourage you to check out that video. It'll give you a, another way to utilize the Mono Sequencer. So let's get into it. Okay, so. The first thing that you're going to want to do is pull in a MIDI track. You can do that with uh, shift command T on a Mac or shift control T on Windows. Once you do, go ahead and drop in the mono sequencer. You can find that in the Max for Live Max MIDI effect folder right there. And then once you have the mono sequencer loaded in, go ahead and go and drop in Simpler, which you can find in uh, Instruments. Next, what we'll do is add uh, any loop into the Simpler. You can pick whatever you want uh, as a loop or a recording into Simpler. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a drum loop. We'll go ahead and pick a random drum loop here and drag it into Simpler. This is the initial patch that you'll have when you bring in the mono sequencer. And the main parameters that you can affect are pitch, velocity, octave, duration, and repeat. Uh, there are other parameters too um, on this other side. We'll get into that in a second. The main ones that will get you these really glitchy effects uh, right off the bat are duration and repeat. These other ones can be uh, useful as well though. On this side, you can see that you can affect the pulse, which is essentially uh, the notes or the note durations that uh, the step sequencer will uh, program. And then these are the actual steps in the step sequencer. So you can see if we change that, we have less steps here. We're just gonna go ahead and keep it at 16 steps for now in the sequencer. So the first thing I'm going to do is in this transport section here, um, you can see that it says free right now, which means that if we play uh, the sequencer, if we press play, the beginning of the notes play where the transport ended last. So what I'm going to do is uh, click that so it says sync and that just basically means that it's now synced to the tempo and the sequencer will play on the one in the sequence. So the mono sequencer is playing just a simple 16th note and that's triggering the simpler to just play that initial hit right here So you can already see where we're going to be heading the easiest way that we can go ahead and just immediately get started uh, glitching out this drum loop is by going into each of these parameters and hitting this random button that will randomize each step in the sequencer. You can also affect how much randomness will be uh, in each step. You can literally set that to wherever you want. Let's just set it at 33.7 and see what happens. You can see each step is now randomly generated and the pitch will now be affected and trigger the simpler accordingly. We'll go ahead and do the same thing for each of these parameters here. So we'll go into velocity, hit random. Let's go ahead and check it out real quick. You can hear the velocity is changing with each step. Go to octave, Let's check that out. Okay, and obviously that's changing the octave accordingly. So these two I mentioned are going to be the main ones that will make a uh, the glitchiness really come alive. So duration. And repeat, we'll randomize that as well. And this will give it the kind of beat repeat patterns. Let's go ahead and explore a couple parameters that we can play with to get some additional sounds. You can also mess with 
this swing function here to adjust your glitches. If you have a loop already going on and you want to add uh, the glitches, this will kind of obviously add some swing uh, to the glitches as well. Let's go ahead and make it a little drastic. So that's a really cool function you can utilize. This pulse function is actually extremely helpful as well. So the sequencer is playing in 16th notes right now, but if we change that to, let's say, quarter notes, you'll notice that the glitches extend even farther and will play even more of the loop that you have or the audio that you have in this simpler. So what you could also do in uh, the simpler, kind of moving away from the mono sequencer for just a second, is you can grab this um, starting point here on the simpler and that will trigger another portion of the loop. And let's go ahead and put that back to 16th notes. So you can really start playing around with that and even automate the starting point to kind of get some uh, unique uh, differences in glitches. Another useful tool are these arrows on the side right here. And what these will do is move the all of the notes in the sequence either up, down, right, or left, uh, depending on what you choose. So if we go ahead and have octave here, and hit up. You can see that all the notes have adjusted accordingly, moving up one, and that will completely change the sound as well. So you have these parameters that you can mess with in the mono sequencer. You also have the parameters on the side here and in here, but also remember that you have a bunch of parameters in the simpler as well that you can mess around with to get even more control or additional tonality options in your glitches. There is already uh, a filter involved in the simpler. So you could, if you wanted to, is maybe have this low pass filter, add some resonance and immediately have a different tone for your glitches. You also have uh, the ADSR right here that you can adjust. And you have this LFO, which you can add to the volume, pitch, pan, and filter to get even crazier options. So let's set our filter again to something like that. And we have the LFO going into the filter or controlling the filter and we'll have some options here. There's one more that I want to show you that is really helpful. So let's say you have this patch in the mono sequencer that you're really happy with and you want to maybe try and find another pattern and just to continue to experiment. This knob here is really, really helpful, this pattern knob. So this whole patch that we made is pattern one, and we can simply move up to pattern two. And we have a completely new patch here that we can mess around with and create a completely different uh, glitch pattern. So maybe we'll even get a little crazier with the randomness for each of these parameters. We'll hit random, octave, random, duration, random, repeat random, and get something even crazier. What's really cool too is let's say you really like this pattern one that you made. You can go ahead and hit copy here and move to a different pattern, let's say pattern three, 
and paste that patch into pattern three, which now you can adjust even further, maybe just one of these parameters that you wanted to change and maybe cut out a couple of sequences here to have something new. We have a ton of options in the mono sequencer to change sounds, adjust the glitches, and just a really, really useful tool in addition to having the simpler here with even further options like the filter, the LFO, and the ADSR control. So say you have a bunch of glitch sounds that you're really happy with and you want to bounce out to either edit further or use that loop in a new project. All you have to do is hit Command T to create a new audio track or Control T on Windows. And what's really nice about the way uh, Ableton MIDI tracks work is when you have something like the Simpler involved, the MIDI track kind of acts like an audio track as well, um, creating an audio output. So what you can do now is send the audio from the MIDI track to this uh, audio track here, and we'll go ahead and rename that. Let's just call it Glitch Sound for now. And arm the track. So I'm talking right now, and obviously uh, Ableton's picking that up. But what we can do from here is hit record, and we'll have our glitches coming into the Glitch Sound audio track. Awesome. So now we have all these glitch sounds here. And all we really did was mess with the mono sequencer and the simpler to create these really glitchy sounds. We can edit these glitches even further and warp them and do whatever crazy stuff we want to do after the fact. But it's a really easy, simple, efficient way to start creating glitch sounds. So there you go guys, that's a way that you can use the mono sequencer to create glitch sounds. Again, you don't have to use a drum loop. Try any type of recording out, a piano, violin, vocals even, um, any type of field recording. You'll get some really interesting sounds by using these techniques. So thank you guys so much for checking out the video. Leave a like if this video was helpful. Comment below if there's anything that I missed or anything that I can improve on. If there's anything that you would like to see me do, subscribe for more content. I'm doing more tutorials and other music related videos. So thank you guys so much for checking this out. Once again, my name's in Tempest. Till next time.